Okay, so let's look at a problem that's typical of the GED uh, math test. Um, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if you had something that relates to this problem on there, not necessarily this shape or finding the area, um, but you'll definitely have to do this skill. What is that? And that is the skill to utilize formulas to find out geometric facts. So we're going to use a formula. We don't have to know how to find the area of this shape. In fact, the GED formula sheet tells us how to do that. And so that's where I'm going to start with the formula sheet. Okay. Um, this will be a drop down option when you go to take your test. But um, this little formula sheet here is invaluable to you. A lot of students look at this and they just feel like they want to vomit. They don't even know what it means. So let's practice using these formulas today. One more glance back at our problem. Notice that we've been told to find the area of the shape. Important that you know what this shape is called. Do you know what this shape is called? Um, here's the clue for me. I'm just going to get a little bit of a different color so that I can highlight this for you. But notice these two parallel sides. Uh, but then the other set of sides are not parallel. Um, a four-sided shape with only one set of parallel sides is known as a trapezoid. A trapezoid. So this is a trapezoid. I'm finding the area of it. Ooh, I like this calligraphy pen. Okay, so I'm finding the area of a trapezoid. Now let's revisit our formula sheet. So we come to our formula sheet and we can see the area is this first section here. And it's hard because I can't write on here. I'm sorry, guys. But look at that first section. It's labeled area. And about four down, you see, five down, you see the trapezoid formula. And it looks hideous. It looks hideous. Uh, but that's what you would copy on your paper as your first step. A equals one half H times the quantity of B1 plus B2. So before you cry, let me write that down uh, on my paper as my first step. And then I'm going to explain it to you. So A equals one half of H times the quantity of B1 plus B2. So what is this sucker telling me? It's telling me to find area. I need to take half of the H's for height and multiply that by what I would get if I added together the two base measurements. You're wondering, what is a base? Well, those are those parallel sides, okay? Let's go ahead and plug into this formula. So area is the thing I'm looking for. Whenever something's a mystery, it remains a letter. I keep my equal sign, I keep my numbers. But half is actually something I know. It's not a mystery anymore, not half, I'm sorry, h, the height. The height is always coming off perpendicular at a right angle. See this little right angle thing? That's how I know that this 15 is the height. So I'm going to put in 15 where I once saw H. Now really super important that you know what this 1 half and this 15 are doing. See how they were shoved together like this? When two numbers are shoved together with nothing in between them, they're multiplying. So let's use parentheses around the 15 to tell me that that sucker is multiplying. Okay, now you have to be very careful that you don't lose any symbols you had before. So my parentheses from before up top need to stay. So does my plus sign. But I know my B1 and my B2. A lot of students think that B1 is something to do. No, when you have these little bottom numbers down here that are below, those are known as subscript. They mean like first, second, third, fourth. Um, it's not telling me to do anything to the B. It's just telling me first base, second base. So you might wonder which one of these is first base and which one of these is second. It doesn't matter, okay? I don't care if you call 13 the first base and 29 the second or vice versa. You'll get the same thing when you add them. So now I've plugged in everything to my formula. And if you wanted to, you could just pick up a calculator and plug that entire expression in. Your GED calculator can totally handle it. Um, but I am going to simplify it myself using, as always, when you have more than one operation going on, you need to use the order of operations. So let me grab up my black pen again. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm just going to leave my half and my 15 because those things are multiplying and I want to do the inside of any groupings before I start with multiplying. So I'm going to do the inside of this grouping. 13 plus 29, let's see, 39, 42. That is 42. Now, what am I going to do here? 
A great question. So a lot of students get confused about this half. Um, remember that multiplying means the same as the word of. So I could take half of 15, or because I can multiply in any order I want, I could take half of 42. It's going to be way easier for me to take half of 42. So I'm going to do that. Half of 42 would be 21. I have a 21 there. Um, and how did I do that? I, I divided that in half in my head. If you can't do that, pick up your GED calculator because I'm just not going to get into that today for this problem. But careful, I have not yet dealt with the 15. So I'm going to drop the 15. These two things are still multiplying. Uh, for my final magic act, I'm going to do the multiplication. Let's see. 20 times 15 would be 300. I think we're going to get 300. And 15. I'm fairly certain here, guys. Okay, um, so 315, but in, out, in uh, geometry, the question is always 315 what? And so if you take a look at this problem, you're not going to see any units on this particular problem. There were no inches, there were no centimeters. We don't know 315 what kind of units. So we'll just call it regular units, but it's important to understand that area is always expressed in square units. We're talking about how many squares can cover a shape. So it would take 315 little squares square units, I call them, to cover this whole shape. Okay, wonderful.